The Omuship institution is as old as the Anyoma nation. It is one of the institutions that distinguishes the Anyoma people from other tribes in Delta State. It is an important position reserved for women in Anyoma society. The Omu plays many roles in different Anyoma communities, ranging from serving as the mother of the community, performing spiritual rites, and presiding over market affairs. This is why the Omu is regarded as the spiritual mother of the town and is answerable to the monarch only. Traditionally, the Omu enjoys a powerful position as a member of the OB in council. Eligibility for the position of Omu varies from community to community, but it is mainly based on tradition, divination and rotation. In Asaba, they consult the ancestral gods to determine the next Omu. Once a particular candidate is favoured, she passes through the rites of coronation which make her the Omu of the community. However, the woman who will enjoy this exalted position must be recognized as patriotic with the zeal to lead and ultimately better the lives of people from the community. Hence, the mantle of Omushi fell on this beautiful woman, Obi Chief Dr. Ada Sande Biosa, who took over as the 14th Omu of Asaba on the 26th of December 2015. Since that day, she has been doing her duties as the Omu of Asaba and carrying everyone in the community along as the ideal mother. The excellent service of the Omu of Asaba has not gone unnoticed as several organizations have bestowed on her several awards. On the 13th of October 2018, the Challenge Initiative bestowed on her the well-deserved award of Face of Family Planning and Champion of Delta States. The Omo of Asaba OB Chief Dr. Ada Biosa works with several bodies, including the Ministry of Health, Primary Health Development Agency, Ministry of Women Affairs, and the Challenge Initiative. OB Chief Dr. Ada Biosa, the 14th Omo of Asaba, tells us what got her interested in family issues. It's a great passion of mine because I'm completely committed to the empowerment of women. And everything that has to do with empowerment of we women is not just something you can come up and say, I'm going to empower women. You must have the passion for it. You must know what it is that you are talking about. And you must have the interest so that when you do one or two things to one woman or to the entire family, you feel very satisfied and uh, you feel fulfilled. It's the fulfillment that comes with empowering women that is truly the drive. Women and children, because they are, let me quote and unquote, the doers and the head of households, let me put it that way. When I say head of households, I'm not talking about like finance, but with a woman that is strong in the house. We have very minute problems. There will be problems, but women are made in such a way that it is their duty, in a way, even if we go back to the Bible, to partner with the man so that she'll be able to take care of her household, empower the man in her own way, and there will be lots of um, peace, love in the family. Family planning is a huge issue in Delta City. In the sense that with family planning, these things that you have just mentioned, children not going to school, Children not being fed well. Children just clustering around because there is no adequate plan, family planning. Family planning is the key to elevate um, poverty in this community. With a huge population growth that has added so much to the hardship people are experiencing in Delta State and also in Nigeria as a whole. Proper family planning in place. There will be time for the partners, for the husband and wives, to get together and plan 
for the children to come. It's not just having so many children, but you need to be able to plan it based on your income, based on what you can afford, based on how can my children go to school? How can I feed my children? With family planning, they will also be able to space out the times of pregnancy. Is it gonna be every two years? Is it gonna be every month or whatever? But surely every two years minimum. That would be my recommendation. So be it, you'll be able to plan adequately for them. And you will be able to give them the love that they need. They will be, the, the children will know that they have been planned. They are here, the couples will get together, love these children, bond with them accordingly and appropriately. Give them the love that each child desires. Each child is unique. It is, it's a taboo to have so many children. You cannot feed them. They cannot go to school. You see girls poking things in the market. It's not acceptable. So with family planning, you'll be able to plan it, space out the pregnancies, and also be able to give these children what they need. And be able to tap into the resources that will be available in the community. But now with overpopulation, we don't have things or resources to take care of these children because they have not planned it. There are so many unwanted pregnancies. It shouldn't be so. A woman should be able to take care of her body and know that, okay, I'm going to have this pregnancy, I'm going to plan for it, I'm, I'm going to be pregnant, I'm going to plan for it, and you plan for it, and you will know with family planning, there are other things that you can do know your body, with family planning is purely contraception, reducing fertility, and making it work for everybody, so that fertility will not overtake the death rates in this country and in this community, and it depends, it's a broad topic health situation in what has been when it comes to family planning I think the health situation is substandard and why not that uh, all these organizations are not having plans but the awareness is not there the community they don't know where to go to get help for different things for example a woman a 30 year old woman has never had a pap smear she doesn't know where to go there are free pap smear or clinics that will offer these um, services free for them. So the awareness is not there. That's not, education is not there. People just take it for granted that, okay, I'll be fine. But there are things everybody has put in place, all these organizations, for example, DCI, the health department, but we didn't know. So as you all move, it is my duty now to put into the community as a trusted mother of everybody. One thing is credibility, another thing is trust. When you go out there, you should be able to communicate those messages in a way that they will understand, number one, and trust you. Then they can implement those things that in knowledge that you are giving them. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is not out there. It's not that the health conditions or services are not there. People don't know about them. And I will now go into the community and make sure, because it's my passion. I know it's good for everybody. It's for their benefits. They will benefit for me. Then I will now go and I will implement, I mean, I will entrust the communication and I will give them the reason to trust me and to believe in what I'm saying. And hopefully they will come on board. They will know where the services are. They will ask questions. I will tell them. I will talk to them. And hopefully we'll get there. Everybody will be well. And as education is not there, and these are the things I'll go into the community to make sure that I do. Family planning, obviously, it's very needed for the reduction of maternal and fetal death rates. And the fact that when there is proper family planning in place, the, the woman or the family or the partners will be able to spread out the uh, times of the pregnancies, the spacing, so that when that is done, the woman's body will be able to come back or heal properly to be able to get pregnant for the other and the bonding for that child will be ample because both partners will be able to 
born with the kids, and not only that, the woman will be able to empower herself also. She might decide to go back to school. She might also decide to go back to work, thereby helping the financial I mean, situation in the family. And the family will both, both will be happy. It won't just be a burden on the mind. My challenges as your mom of Asaba in terms of family planning is due to um, some barriers. I look at it like some cultural barriers, things that have been put in place in the past. Family barriers. People look at family planning towards looking at the woman as if it's a way for her to be promiscuous. When she's into family planning, she'll be, you know, but that's nothing. That is one idea I plan to change. We're not talking about making a family. We're talking about family planning here. And also, it will also, I will also, I know there are a lot of religious myths about family planning. That's one great area that I would like to go into the churches, go to people, and try to give them the knowledge, let them know what it is that family planning is and how it will benefit the human being, the family, and the community as a whole. The way to cope all these challenges is to get the awareness to educate the community, to, to make sure you let them know the benefits of what family planning is all about. When they have that knowledge, when they know what it is, and they trust with the messenger, they trust me, and they know, as a medical doctor also, I think that will help for people to understand, oh, she knows what she's talking about. They will look at my own lifestyle. They will look at the children I have brought up. And then we know that what I'm saying is the real thing. The advice I'll give, I'll start first of all for the government to implement family planning in their curriculum in the school. I believe the girls, when they get into that age, when they get into secondary school or the period when they start, they need to know about their body. They need to know what to do with it. If the government has it in the curriculum, like they have history or any other subject or social science and have, let's call it physical health, that would encompass the human body. Family planning itself, the different contraception in place for the girls to tap into when that time comes, when they become aware that it's not a problem, the government, it, it's a subject you must do good in, I think that would help. Also, the government, I believe they should have more input or more places or wellness centers where women can easily go into and take care of different tests that they need to take care. And also, we should have a lot of um, advertisements in different ways bring out the knowledge, the family planning, bring it out to the community. It shouldn't be just organizations going from one place to another. It should be known. Government should have into it too and make it knowledgeable to everybody. But I believe that education is number one. Oh my goodness. I, I feel greatly honored to be a part of this family planning issue. Not for anything, just because I truly believe in it. It's a program that will benefit all, not only just the women, the families, the community. It will elevate poverty to an extent. It will also de decrease the mortality rates that we see with these uh, women and other things. So I'm really honored and I believe in it. That's why you know, I've accepted to be part of it, not just for the award. People give you award for what they think you have done, community service hour. But for this, it, it's me. It's, it, it's call it, it's my mission. I will start with the men. With family planning, I'm asking all the men to come on board. Family planning is for family, not just for the woman. The man should be able to support his wife, his partner, to make sure that it becomes a success. The man should not look at it that it's, it's the woman's business, it is also the man's business. So please, I'm asking the men, get to know what family planning is. Tap into 
it and look at it critically and see that it's a program that will benefit even you the man more. And also family planning goes both ways. The woman has her own contraception she can take. The man has his own family planning also. So it's a family affair. And for the woman, I'm telling you, please, make sure that you make a conscientious decision as to how many pregnancies. Whatever ways you can convince your husband, get him on board so that you'll be able to take care of that God-given body, the body that God has given you, and stop abusing it by having so many unwanted pregnancies. The answer is for you to have your desired pregnancy, have your desired child at your own term, based on your resources and what you have to make them become those leaders of tomorrow. So I encourage men, women, to come on board. The government has their own plans and whatever they do. But I am here and I'm telling the government in any way that they believe they can tap into what I can do. I'm a public servant as well. I will partner with them and do my own part. Women and men of Delta State, get it together for a brighter future. I want to say thank you, ma'am, and thank you, everybody. When we talk about women and children's health, particularly family planning, it is a very serious issue. We just interviewed um, a real highness, and some of the things she said is so shocking. If we think about how women are dying in Nigeria, it will shock you.